Hello, welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic. And um, today, a puzzle called 23 by Blobs. We'll get to that in a moment. Don't... No, I was going to say, don't forget, you can still enter the Cryptic Snake puzzle competition, but you can't. It's over. It was over yesterday. Very well done to the hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people who entered correct solutions to the full snake hunt and are getting their names read out gradually by Simon on the channel. Um, that has been just a fantastic entry. Yet again, you guys continue to amaze us with your application skills and your determination. Very good indeed. Um, and thank you so much to all the people who contributed to the Cryptic Scriptures of the Secret Snake Society. It was a brilliant hunt. Now, we are still planning, before year end at least, to bring you a hunt by none other than the incredible Fistmafell. And that is as good a reason as any to give yourself a year's subscription to Patreon. Um, it's going to be brilliant. We're really looking forward to being able to bring that to you. And then we have plans for January's and February's actual reward puzzles, which will again be hunts by some of the classiest authors around. Honestly, Patreon is the place to be. Even if you didn't want to see Simon solve Tall Cat's Shadow, and you do, it's on there. Check it out. There's some great stuff there. Now, what else is going on? We've got, of course, the merchandise and the apps. Do check them all out. They are fantastic quality stuff. And one of the apps, um, one of the releases with the new app, in fact, was the 500k um, puzzles celebration pack where we had 21 brilliant puzzle authors send us um, brilliant puzzles and we included them in the pack and they were free. That You can still get them now. If you download the CTC app, one of the free um, puzzle packs is the 500k puzzle pack. And one of those puzzles was by Blobs and it had the same rule set as this puzzle. Now, I think the history is that Blobs actually sent us the first puzzle, which I think was called 11 and had two one shapes in the grid. And then a little later sent us this and said, I think it's actually a bit better. But it was too late already. We had sent on, we tested and sent on 11 to um, the web design guy and it was it was in the pack. So this one never got used at that point. So I'm going to give it a go now. It is as I say, called 23. Why am I not doing this on the 23rd of the month? Well, because I'm doing it today, but also because I actually have a different puzzle to do on that day specifically. So uh, we'll get to that in three days time. But this one is called 23. You can see the shapes of two and three in the grid. And because you won't remember, unless you're very brilliant, the 11 puzzle, I will go through the rules. Normal Sudoku rules apply. So that's one to nine in every row, column and box. Um, I should add, by the way, that 23 is not only represented in the green cages, but also in the given digits and in all the cage totals that we are given. Anyway, normal Sudoku rules imply digits in cages do not repeat and must sum to the small clue in the top left corner if given. Normal killer rules, but of course we have these cages as well with no sums given. Now, adjacent digits along a green line, this is German whispers, must differ by at least five. So you could put one and six in here or one and eight, but you couldn't put three and seven. So those are the rules. Do give the puzzle a try on the link under the video. I am going to start now, so let's restart my clock and let's get cracking. Okay, well, the first thing to note is that, as in the 11 puzzle, these green cages are nine cell cages. So they contain the digits one to nine exactly once each, just like every row, column and box. And they've got long German whispers. Now, where does five go on a German whisper line? And the, uh, the trick answer is nowhere. It can't be on a German whisper line because the number it would connect to would necessarily have a difference of less than four. So there is a five in one of these cells. And actually in the other cage, there's a five in one of these cells. So this is a sort of X-wing or skyscraper. It means there can be no fives in the rest of these rows. 
because the two fives in those rows are in the cages. Doesn't mean much else for us yet. Okay, so f fours and sixes are always the next most interesting numbers. Now, i tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna color the line. So let's go, uh, let's use blue and yellow. Now what I'm doing is, okay, that, that does tell me something. So I've alternated along this line. And the reason for that is along a German whispers line, um, every, every other cell is the same polarity. And I'm talking about, in this case, high and low numbers. Numbers higher than five and numbers lower than five. Five can never be on the line. So we're always gonna have first a higher number, then a lower number, then a higher number, then a lower number. That must be how it works. So the four either higher or lower numbers in this cage appear in those cells. And that's either one, two, three, four, ah, or five, six, seven, eight. And these can't include four or six. So that's either a set of one, two, three, or seven, eight, nine. Why can't they include four or six? And the important point about four or six on a German whisper line is if it's two neighbors can see each other, a cell can't be four or six. So if that was four, it always needs to be next to nine. So both of those would have to be nine. Right, let's color this line as well. There's I mean, I'm just random. This is not necessarily the same blue and yellow as the other side. Ah, again, we get four yellows. Oh, three. I don't know, it's not actually giving me much. Ah, maybe I should work on the 23 cages. So up in this box, we've got two 23 cages with a couple of sticky out points. 46 plus that, which is going to be 4, 5, or 6, equals 50, 51, or 52. And that, subtracting the total of box 1, and if you know the secret, you'll know that box 1 contains a total of 45, will leave... Five, six, or seven. That's not actually all that helpful. Now, how do I know that this cell contains four, five, or six? And that's because these two cells are either green or the yellow four or six. Because these can't be four or six. Their neighbors all see each other. So actually, those cells can only be selected from four, five, or six. I don't think that works here because that one and that one and that one could all be from four, five, and six, and they include different polarities. Oh, the six cell 23 cage, maybe that. Yeah, hang on, a six cell 23 cage. What does it have to contain? What is the lowest digit it can avoid containing? That's what I'm gonna ask. So if you have a one and a two and a three, that's six. Do you have to have a four? Yes, you do, because if you had one, two, three, five, six, seven, the minimum is 24. So you do have to have a four. So there are, are therefore two ways of filling a 23 cage in six digits. It's either one, two, three, four, five, seven, five, eight, I mean, or one, two, three, four, six, seven. So, so the three in this cage, which must exist in it, is in one of those two cells. Then the three in this cage, which is another six cell cage, can't be in this box anymore. It's in one of those two cells. So that's now not a three, and that is. And now there's a two in it as well, but that can be in one of two places. Ah, these two cells see all the cells here. Right. They cannot contain one, two, three, or four, which must all be in this cage. So these are the two big digits that add to 13. These are the one, two, three, four digits. Now I can put in two there. Oops, what happened there? I just want that cell highlighted. Two there and one or four there. These cells contain these two. So they're either three, well, they are three and either one or four. 
these two add up to 13. So they're either 8, 5, or 7, 6, and the other of 8, 5, or 7, 6 goes in here. And I've only just realized the absolutely simple question, where does 9 go in this box? It can't go in a 6 cell 23 cage. It goes here, and it determines the parity on this green 3. Oh, the polarity, not the parity, the polarity. And what it's saying is that the blue digits on this one are the high digits. This here, I was going to say it sees three low digits, but two of them could be the same. It sees at least two low digits. So that's eight or seven, surrounded by one, two or three. This could be any high digit, but the yellow digits here are the four low digits. Oh, and they can't be a three in those cells because of that. There also can't be a four in them because their neighbors can't both be nine. So that's a one, two pair. That fixes four and one. This in the K in the in the region is a three, four pair now. This one can't be a four because it can't be next to nine. So it's a three next to eight. This is the four that is next to nine. That's fine. This is seven or six and I don't know which. And these are from five, six and seven. And one of them's a five. And that's a real start. Let's get rid of the coloring there. We've done it and it may not be the same as the coloring over here. In fact, maybe we can determine what's going on with the coloring over here. That can't be a four anymore, which is slightly interesting. Um, now, neither, none of these can be a three or an eight. Oh, hang on, we've fixed three in this cage. There it is. Oh, and that's the same as that, so it's four. Hang on, hang on, maybe I can... Now, I, st I still don't know whether this is eight, five, or seven, six. That might be a one, two pair, but it might not. Um, eight, four, three, one, two. These are from five, six, seven, nine. Ah, oh, there's a three, four pair sort of laddering up the grid. Now, can both three and four be in the 23 cage? Yes, annoyingly, yes, if that was a nine, seven pair. So I'm not sure what that does. Okay. Now, I'm to keep trying to look at this cage and not really getting anywhere. Ooh, three. I've got a two, two. There's a two in one of those. I've got three, three. There's a three in one of those. Now, three and four are now both looking at these cells. Are they going to be the low cells? If so, that's two and one. That's three. That's four. Oh, this can't be an extreme digit. It's also not three, eight, or four. When I say an extreme digit, it can't be four or six. It's also not three or eight or five, obviously. I suppose it could still be a seven flanked by a two, one pair. Oh, I didn't, I thought I might get what this K, what this polarity was from this stuff. Oh, I do in a beautiful way. Look at this, three and three in those positions say that there's a three in one of those. Now, I don't know where that three is. It's in any one of those cells. But the really exciting thing about those three cells is they see all of these yellow cells. And these yellow cells are either a one, two, three triple because all of them have neighbors that see each other, or a seven, eight, nine triple. But once three can see all of them, we know they're not a one, two, three triple. That's absolutely beautiful. They're a seven, eight, nine triple. And the polarity on this uses the other color um, combo. So blue has become low on this. We've got a one, two pair there that see the three, four. This is a three. I mean, we're away to the races thanks to that incredible impossibility of three being in any of those cells. That's so weird. Four there gives us a nine. That makes that seven because it also sees an eight. Seven is flanked by one and two. I mean, that's as much as we can do there, but it's a huge advance. I can take out the coloring now. 
which was always a bit gloopy with blue and yellow on a green background. I should probably have been able to tell that. There's a four in one of those two cells. Now, how do we solve the rest of the puzzle? Oh, there's no four here, so that's a five, six pair now. Doesn't do anything, does it? This can't be seven. These two can't be nine. Um, five, six, that's five or six. That's five, six or nine in the middle row. Hmm. The deduction about, um, this is a six cell 23 cage. Can I do anything with that? I know there's a one, two, three, four in it. And there's no nine in it, is there? So there's a nine in this section of box one, and therefore in the twenty, the four cell twenty-three cage. It doesn't really tell me all that much. One, two, four, three. There's a nine in one of these two cells by Sudoku, and one of these two, thus in the twenty-three cage up there. Um, okay, I don't quite know what to check now. I've finished with the German Whispers. I've pretty much... Oh, no, I haven't. Look, that... I was going to say I've pretty much finished with the nine cell extra regions, but there's not a seven possibility there. So one of those two is a seven in this five, six, seven triple in row three. And that means this isn't a seven. And now I get a five, six pair in row seven. I'm not sure what that does for me. It makes this one, seven or eight. Now this cage, ah, this is a four cell cage without a nine in it. That nine sees all of its cells. And I don't think we can have a four cell cage without a nine or an eight because the maximum it could add up to, 7654, is only 22. So there must be a 9 or an 8 in this cage, and there's only one place for one of those digits to go, and that is an 8 here. And now, these cells add up to 15 without a 9 or an 8. They could be 762. Now, that would work. 753. No, they can't be that. 6... Five, four, and they can't be that because of this pencil mark. It would be killed. So they are seven, six, two. Oh, lovely. Okay, so that's seven, six. This is going to get tons done. Seven, six, two. That fixes the one, two pair. Use the German whispers. We can put a seven there now. Um, seven, six, two also fixes that and that, and we can put in four and eight. That's not a two by Sudoku. Looking along this, no, I mean, I've done so much. That's become a two. These don't have a five in. Two, six, seven, eight, one, three. That can't be six or seven. We've got five, four, and nine to place in row six. We've got three, five, six, eight, four, nine as a triple here. So that is one or seven. These are from 1, 2, and 7, and one of them is a 2. 4, 2, 1, 8, 3, 5. This has fixed all the 5, so the extra regions are completely done now. 5 in box 8 is there. That's a 9, 7 pair. This can't be 7 or 6 now. Um, oh, this is great. Um, 3, let's do some box maths. 3, 5 and 2 is 10, plus the 23 there is 33. These two add up to 12, and they don't include a 3 or a 5, so there are 4 and an 8, and they can be written straight in. This cage is made up of 1, 6, 7, 9, and that's a bit harder to do anything with. 8 there, oh, there's an 8 in this 23 cage, so it is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 8. That's the only way to do it. That's a 2, because it sees all of the other digits. This is one, three, four, five, eight. So this is seven, nine, two. And I can put all of those in straight away. 16, 18, this becomes a five. 
That is now a 4-9 pair, making this a 6. That makes this a 5 as well. That's a 6-7 pair. We've got a 1-3 pair here that isn't resolved. Oops, a 1-3 pair that isn't resolved. This cage must balance now. Okay, maths on this box. 23 plus 11 is 34. These two add up to 11 without using 4, 5, or 2. So that's a 3-8 pair. That's a 1, 6, 7, and 9 to place in the box. Can't do it all, but we can do lots of it. Um, now, that's become a 1. That's nice. That's a 2-7 pair. Ah, and now we know that 7 and, what is it? 6 are in this box. So this is a 6 and a 1. In this cage, I mean, this is an 8 and a 5. Still haven't resolved those, but I can now on the bottom row. 7 there, 9, 7, 6, 9. This is a very clever puzzle. I mean, not too difficult, but there are some very nice steps in it, I think. So we get a 5 at the top. 9, 5, 6, 7. This is done, 7 and 6. Ah, I think the 4, 3 are going to go in that cage after all. There was a 4-3 pair there, 4-3 pair there. The only way they could go in is with a 9-7 combination here. Now we've got the 9-7 combination here, and we know that one of those three fours must go into this cage at least. Then both of them have to, to make up the total correctly. So we can do that. Two and seven are resolved. This is an eight. What are these two? Five and six. We can do them, and that sorts out where six is. In this cage, that's going to sort out the last pair we had below row three. Eight and three here. This is just going to be done now. One there. Nine and two. Four and three. Eight and a one to finish. And there we go. Just under 23 minutes, which is great for the Puzzle 23. Hope you had fun with that one. That's a nice one today. Uh, thank you, Blobs, for sending it, as always. Um, well, thank you for reminding us about it, in fact, which is perfectly fair, because it's a very interesting puzzle. I'm glad we've been able to bring that to you. Do let us know what you think of it in the comments. Um, and generally, how are you doing? It's great to speak to you, and I hope you're having a great holiday season. We'll see you again soon on the channel. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.